Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking to us about incident reporting and error logging. Some of us have gone for an interview and you'll be asked what is incident reporting or what is error logging. And sometimes we don't even know where to place what. Hopefully today I can be able to help us to be able to know the difference between error logging and incident reporting. And hopefully from there we can be able to know what is really incident and what is error, okay? So before we go on, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a biomedical scientist and I'm a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So let's get into this. First of all, we're going to look at what is laboratory incident. Remember, there can be incident in many organizations, but we're going to focus mainly on laboratory incident. So what exactly is laboratory incident? One of the things I want you to know about incident is that it is something that you don't intend, is unplanned, you don't know it's going to happen, it's unexpected, okay? But when you look at error, or in terms of the error, you are looking at misjudgment, okay? So there's a misjudgment of something, something has happened, but you misjudge it, that is error. But I think we'll get into that. So when we talk about incident, you are looking at something you are not expecting. You don't know it's going to happen. It is unintended. That is incident. So now, when that event happens, and that event is unplanned event, unintended event, unexpected event, that could potentially harm the patient or affect the patient's health care, that is called incident. That is laboratory incident. Now, how can we define incident? Laboratory incident can be defined then as any unintended or unexpected event which could lead to or have led to harm for one or more patients receiving health care. That is incident. Now, what then is incident report? Now that we've known what incident means, what then is incident report? When you say incident report, because something has happened, even though you don't know it's going to happen, it's unplanned, it's unintended, it's unexpected, but it has happened. And because it has happened, it could have affected the patient or have affected the patient's health care, okay, or receiving health care. What it means, then is that there has to be a way of documenting such an event and in documenting such an event it can then help NHS or the laboratory to learn from its mistake and learning from its mistake will then help it to prevent it where possible for such events occurring again and that is where there can be a new policy or a new guideline on how to do something there can be a modification on how to carry out a particular you know, um, services or activities that would have, that have led to such an event. So that is where incident report comes in. So that unintended event that has happened that you don't know is going to happen, but have, have affected the patient receiving health care, you need to report it. So that process of reporting this unintended event is what we call incident reports. There are reasons why we have to do incident reports. Number one, it supports NHS. For example, it supports a um, pathology laboratory to learn from its mistakes. Number two, it helps NHS hospital, okay, including of course pathology laboratory, to take action regarding that event, okay, in a way that can then keep the patient safe. And that is where I say something like they have to modify the process or make a change regarding how to do that activity, okay. Number three, it helps for preventive measure. Now, this preventive measure can come in the form of reporting it online. When that event is reported online, you know, it then helps to have a record of such an event and how that can be prevented. That way, it cannot happen again in the future. And then, the way we report it online is by using DATICS. And this DATICS is an online form, okay, which is used to be able to report this unintended or unexpected event. Incident in pathology laboratory or in NHS hospital could be tangible or intangible. For example, you have damage to individual 
equipment okay so what there's any damage to individual equipment even if you don't know that that is going to happen it is unintentional unexpected that has to be reported and it is an incident number two damage to public or professional confidence in the organization so what happened that there could be an event that could lead to a question on the integrity of that very organization okay once there's such an event is an incident and that again has to be reported then number three anything that affects the health and safety okay like as captured in the definition of incident has to also be reported so it's an incident so if there is any activity that potentially could could have or have affected the patient receiving health care that should also be re reported is an incident number four if there's any form of accident such as maybe someone trips or fall or maybe there's a sharp injury for example if there's a sharp object that pierces a patient maybe a member of staff or as the case may be that also is an incident. So this is just a way of me trying to summarize the possible incident, the things that you should see when you talk about incident, okay? So the incident has to do, like I've said, whether it is equipment damage, if there is accident, okay, maybe against the patient or the staff, okay, or maybe if there is loss of public confidence or professional confidence, okay, about an organization, or maybe if there's anything that affects health and safety of maybe even a patient or maybe a member of staff, they are all form of incident. Now, when we are reporting this incident, what and what then should we include in the incident? If I'm going to focus on the five pieces of information that need to be included in incident reporting. Number one, name and the positions of the people involved. So anybody involved, any member of staff involved in that incident, as the case may be, their names and the position has to be included in the incident report. Number two, names of the witnesses, okay? Who and who saw what happened. Any witnesses need to be included. Number three, location or addresses of the incident. Where exactly did the thing happen, okay? That needs to be highlighted. Number four, time and date of occurrence. When did it happen? At which time? And which day did that happen? Okay? Number five, a clear description of what exactly happened. So you have to write exactly as many as you can remember what exactly happened. These are the five pieces of information that should be included in the incident report. So now I've said that incident has to do with unintended or unexpected event which could potentially or have affected patient receiving um, health care. Now, let us look at what is error. Like I've said before, error has to do with mixed judgment or wrong decision, okay? So, when, when there's a mixed judgment or wrong decision of an event or maybe something that goes on in the laboratory, you know, there is a mistake in the approach used to uh, handle that, um, you know, event or situation or activity that is then called error okay because remember that laboratory or even nhs at life has a policy or they have standard operating procedure on how something can be done so if that is misjudged or if a wrong decision is taken because of not understanding what has been documented or how to go about such an activity that is then called error. error can then be defined as misjudgment wrong decision or wrong action Therefore, errors are categorized as mistakes and problems that affect the work of the laboratory. Although it may not affect the overall trust, however, this mistake has now affected the laboratory, the work of the laboratory. That can be seen as error, and this can be due to mistakes. Errors include mistakes that have been detected before the result is maybe authorized or validated or maybe before it gets to the patient. Let me give you an example. Maybe there was a wrong decision in the judgment of a particular result and this result has been validated okay, or authorized or released and someone pick it up at some point. Are you getting me? That is an error. And when that person pick it up, it can then be retrieved. The result can be retrieved. How can it be retrieved? Maybe they can phone the world and say, please ignore this result or as a case may be, something can be done about it. And in some cases, if it has gotten to the patient, okay, if the doctor had already made use of that result in maybe judging or making a decision on the patient, what it then means is that the doctor as well need to be made aware. So when you have a result that is mistakenly being authorized or released following a wrong judgment or wrong decision or action, okay, 
which maybe either has been retrieved before it gets to the doctor or get to the patient or has been corrected following the authorization or release of that very result which maybe the doctor has also used the result to you know manage the patient that is also a form of error and this is where something like maybe transcription error comes in or booking error comes in so for example maybe in a specimen reception someone may book sample wrongly okay it can be booked against another name maybe a particular patient is booked against another patient once that is detected it can then be retrieved before that is processed and the result get to, get to the doctor so that is error okay or transcription in the sense that a result has been generated, but the way it's been transferred to the doctor, okay, maybe has been done in an error. Or possibly a comment has been put in that result, which should not be in that result. These are errors. So, what there is any form of misjudgment, okay, in the activities or any event, okay, that goes on in the laboratory, okay, which could affect a patient or maybe have also affected a patient is called error. Now, you can see that the difference between error and incident is that with the incident, it is unintended event, unexpected event. But with error, it is a mixed judgment. It's a wrong decision. It's a wrong action that someone has taken, okay, which could possibly affect the patient or have affected the patient. And some of the example is what I've given to you booking a, a particular sample against another person or maybe uh, putting a wrong comment in a particular result or maybe a wrong result has been released or maybe a, a result has been released following a wrong judgment or a wrong decision as the case may be. These are forms of errors. So once again, I want you to know that error has to do with wrong decision, wrong action or misjudgment of an activity or an event. While incident has to do with unintended or unexpected event i hope that makes sense okay so now that we've defined error let us look at what is then error logging because we've talked about incident reporting what is then error logging now in the error logging unlike maybe in the incident reporting where you can have something like maybe and um, that that things we've mentioned okay in the error logging what you are likely to use is what to call kappa kappa is corrective action or preventive action so that's why we call it corrective slash preventive action okay so that is kappa and with this kappa again is of course is also it can also be done online okay so with the kappa it this is where you can then report any of these errors any of this wrong decision or mistakes or misjudgment of an event okay this is where it can be reported and this is also important as also highlighted in the incident reporting it's here to see why that thing happen why should that mistake happen why should that misjudgment happen why should that wrong action happen the reason why it happened should then be reviewed and from that way policies or maybe there could be a modification on the method or ways of carrying out such activities it helps the nhs or the laboratory to continue to improve to make sure that they ensure health and safety to patients who are receiving these services I hope this makes sense. That is why it is extremely important in the NHS hospital and also in the pathology laboratory to report any of these very errors, okay? The essence is to make sure that, you know, there can be a corrective or preventive action so that that will not happen in future. And this error it can be monitored ideally, monthly, okay, and in timely manner. And this can actually help the department to know whether they have any problem, like underlining problem, is there anything that can be changed within the department or not. And this is where maybe the department can also may need to review their training system or update as the case may be. Or this error can occur in a place of work, such as in the pathology laboratory. And this could include something like maybe problem with the specimen received, okay, as a result of mistake, you know, uh, with a, a member of staff. For example, the sample is being received and maybe the way the member of staff handled the sample, you know, um, could affect the outcome of that very result, that is also seen as error. And of course, errors as well could also be due to maybe failure with the equipment. And also, in addition to this, it's also important that once this error has occurred or detected, okay, it is important that these very errors is reported to the a senior member of staff or the laboratory manager. Like I've said, the overall reason is to make sure that action will be taken to make sure that that will not happen again in future. I hope I've been able to differentiate incident from error 
and also incident report from error logging. Like I've said, incident has to do with unintended, unexpected event. While error has to do with misjudgment, wrong decision, or wrong action. Okay, so the reporting or either error logging or incident reporting it means that you are there is a documentation to you know explain what happened and how it happened. That way, it can help the department to improve. That is the whole essence of this very incident reporting or error logging. Let me know what you think about the video by putting a comment on the comment section. Okay, if you have any question, you can also put it on the comment section. Please, can I ask you to like, share, and subscribe? Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Till I come back away again. Bye bye.